to SC2 CTL, where we have the shortest breaks in esports. <laughs> we are glad you are joining us today. This is the StarCraft 2 Community Team League live grand final show, and I am here with Gallegation. I am Winged SC. We are your hosts. Mm -hmm. We have been joined by Grubby already this fine day, and we will be joined by In Control here this afternoon. So you can look forward to that if, you're, if our pretty fine faces aren't enough to uh, keep you entertained. Hopefully it is, and we appreciate your viewership and hanging Absolutely. out with us today. Yep. Um, we have another match. It's all set. It's going to be Integrity Gaming Zaylin versus No Dice Gaming's Cowman. Now, this is neat because we haven't seen Zaylin play at all nope. this season. This is his first appearance. He is the uh, the founder, organizer, manager of Integrity Gaming, and uh, he even had to like just send us a brief bio of himself in the game because he's like I, I don't know who else to play I'll just go myself and uh, so <laughs> he uh, he describes himself as the owner and manager of Team Integrity he is a retired pro Warcraft 3 player turned manager founder and uh, he describes himself as a scrubby P Canadian Protoss player <laughs> uh, that those are his words. So he will be going up against Cowman from No Dice Gaming, and we have seen him already today, looking mighty strong. He is at Twitter.com/slash/CowmanSC. He's a Protoss player from the United States, and he plays from the No Dice Gaming's Academy. He is a WCS challenger in 2014, and considers himself to be very macro oriented. Uh, so we will be seeing a PVP with uh, No Dice Gaming up three to two. So Zaylin has to pull out a win if he wants to keep his team in the tournament. Uh, Cowman actually is saying that he, if, if he had a pet SC2 unit, it would be a probe. Oh. Or a battle cruiser. Or a battle cruiser. <laughs> All right. Yes. Something very big or v very small. Yes. One of the two. But we are starting this match. We are on the countdown. Hoorah. Raise your dongers and get ready for this match. Yes. Kappa. <laughs> I don't think it works if you say Kappa. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> We're going into oh Way Station. It is going to be Integrity Gaming Zaylin versus No Dice Gaming's Cowman. No Dice up 3-2 to two at the moment. If Cowman closes out this game, it will be a win for No Dice Gaming, and they will take $100 out of this season of SC2 CTL. Yep. If Zaylin wins, we will go to a game number 7. As I get all of the stuff set up here, it is going to be 3-2... to two. We are your production crew, so it takes us just a second to get the game set up before we go in, and we are all set going into game number six of our third best of seven of four total today on Waystation, the Orange Protoss, appearing for his second time so far today. It is No Dice Gaming's Cowman. And in the bottom right-hand corner playing Protoss, representing Integrity Gaming and... Making his first StarCraft II Community Team League appearance, it is Zaylin. Whoa, whoa. Freaking out here. So, we have Look a PvP at. on a very large map. Yes. Very big. What, are you, what would you do in this situation? If you were Zaylin and all the marbles are on the line here, what Honestly, do you do? Something really silly, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, we'll have to see. So far, and the thing is, we don't know anything about Zaylin. Uh, yeah, we have not seen him play. We haven't heard of how he plays, what mm -hmm. he plays. Uh, the bio we have is all we've heard of him all season. So we honestly don't know what is what's going to come out of him. Um, are we going to see something cheesy? Are we going to see something normal, aggressive, macro? Not exactly sure, but we will soon find out. Um, but this is a big map, so I mean, on it, you know, what am I if I'm if I'm playing this, you asked me the question, give me a little bit more. Am I? Do I want to end it quick, or do I want it to go to a long game? Well, I don't know. You, that's what I'm asking you, is because <laughs> your your team is on the line, and you, you want to try and win here. You, you're a scrubby Protoss player who used to play a lot of Warcraft. Okay. Given that, if I'm a scrubby <laughs> Protoss player, I'm going to want to end it quick. I'm going to scout around for anything that might be going down that's silly uh, coming out of a guy named Cowman. Uh, as the probe is going to be coming in here, and I'm going to probably just go for something aggressive. Three-gate Robo. I don't know. Robo is kind of hard because it's a long long walk across the map. Probably something with warp gates, I guess. Blink Stalkers. Blink Stalkers. All yep. right. There we go. Oh, no. Cowman taking the assimilator uh. and Zaylin, uh <laughs> call him out on it. Well, he can still four-gate. Yes, he can. 
<laughs> only need one gas for that. He just has to keep all of his uh, tech units on the opposite side. And actually, you know, there's a second warp, or sorry, gateway coming down. Cybernetics core is happening. There is no natural expansion just yet, but for neither player. Three gas on either side for his uh, cowman here. So he's going for a lot of gas, getting a sentry and a warp gate right away. He is going to have sort of an auto scout here in the in the base of Zaylin. So looking at what he can see, he can see just about everything right now because he does have a probe in there as well. Yep. But I mean, he's Chrono Boost in the poop out of warp gate here, putting down a third gateway. I'm sniffing a four gate. Yeah. And I think that Cowman sniffs it too, if not even but, forcing it. But honestly, this is these are really early gateways, even for a four gate. Usually, wouldn't put down the last two at least, if not the last three, until a warp gate is half done. But, I mean, he's chrono boosting it out. He wants it out right now. But And there's a probe headed across right now. And he's going to need to get that pylon down in the next 10 to 15 seconds if he wants it to finish by the time warp gate's done. And also needs to put down that fourth warp gate if that's what he intends to do. Yeah, he was a bit supply blocked there for a moment. Uh, did put down the pylon. But both players right up against their caps at the moment. I mean, uh, and Kalman has seen these warp, has seen these gateways. And uh, Zaylin, as you said, is supply block. Uh, not going to be a four gate because we would be seeing the fourth gateway by now. But oh man, Common Sentry is way out of position. The Stalker's yeah. going to be able to do a lot of damage. It looks like Mothership Core is going to come up to try and save it, but I don't know. Is that uh, juicy? Oh, this, yeah, the Stalker's going to try and move back. Warp gate is almost done. Three gateways is what it's going to be. These Stalkers are on their way out. One is going to finish up here in the next few seconds. The other two still have some cooking time on them. So they are going to have to walk across the map. Uh, Zalen does have 10 supply available, which is just about three Stalkers. So he's going to be able to warp in three here real quick. As Warp gate's done, open up the gateways. Uh, two Stalkers here. Oh, looks like he's not going to be aggressive. With no, this. he's yeah putting down a Nexus now, so this is a little odd. All right, well, that's fine. Definitely an uh, uh, I'm not going to say that word. Uh, definitely a different play out of Protoss here with three defensive gateways and a very early chrono boosted warp gate. Um, I mean, really, it just comes down to I think uh, Zalen didn't like what he saw over in Cowman's base. He saw four sentries in a mothership core. You're yeah. going to have a real hard time getting up into that base. Right, but if he, I mean, he obviously doesn't know that this, but the natural it was just pushed put down. If he moves across now with these stalkers, he might be able to get something done because those sentries are only going to keep him out of the main. It's not going to. Mm -hmm push him off and if he's able to, to get a cancel on that nexus at least but now the uh, sentries are moving up well thing is also Zaylin has all the vision right now he's got the pylon on the right the tower on the left the units coming up the middle so I mean he is going to make something happen here Kalman does have an immortal coming out of his robo so that is certainly going to help him he has at least one and almost two uh, photon overcharges now. Looks like Kalman's going for the long game here while Zaylin kind of wanted to get something done. So I mean, I, he's going to have to cancel this Nexus. There's no way this is going to finish. Great timing by Zaylin because it's waited long enough that it's been almost done, but oh, the Immortal's going to come down. He's got to get that Immortal. As much as Zaylin going to commit to this, he's moving back. These sentries are going to be able to lock him in here now, so he's going to lose most of these stalkers if he commits, but he's not getting the Nexus down. Oh, but he got the Mothership Core. Yeah, so no Photon Overcharge, so that's actually pretty useful. It would be uh, useful also if he had one Sentry, but it looks like Kalman is just going to let this fall now as he's uh, running low on Force Fields. He doesn't want to waste too many Force Fields here out front, otherwise he won't be able to keep him out of his main base. <laughs> yeah, it looks like Zaylin backing off a bit, Kalman checking to see how far back he went, uh, but more army re uh, coming together here as this uh, group is moving forward. And uh, just interesting, interesting play here. We've uh, got three gates and now a Twilight Council coming down. Nexus is down and uh, just continuing to push the front, it seems. Yeah, this is this has been PvP for me so many times. Um, and Kalman's in a position where Zaylin is not going to get in. He's just straight up not going to get in. Mm -hmm. He's perfectly safe, but he can't expand. Uh, and he can't really do that much. He's got two Immortals and a decent number of sentries, probably five, six, seven force fields here. Um, but he's got one base Colossus coming down, Robotics Bay. Oh, did that kick? Okay, it didn't. It just finished. I thought it got canceled for a second. <laughs> it's like, no, but Colossus is coming down, plus one attack. So Kalman is eventually going to be able to push out of here, but still, uh, Zaylin behind this going for the Dark Shrine. Now he's go oh, picking up one wow. sentry. Two sentries go down. That is a big deal, Galagation. And those two had some of the most energy of all the sentries that were there. Uh, Kalman continuing to warp in Zealots on the low ground. 
Yeah, uh, and neither player making probes right now. Okay, and as I say that, Zalon starts chrono boosting out one probe. Um, but, I mean, Colossus costs a lot. Upgrades cost a lot. And Kalman is just really investing all of his resources here into infrastructure and into uh, big units. While Zalen is back at home, he's making two additional gateways. He's making a Dark Shrine, which is half done. Yeah, he's backing off quite a bit here, though. And uh, it looks as though Kalman is going to be able to secure his natural now. Oh, but Kalman is so far behind. And he's, I mean, he... Zalen moving up here from nice force fields separate a lot of the stalkers, but they don't really trap any. They just kind of keep them away. Uh, I think with those immortals, he probably could have gotten a little bit more kills there, but now he's just going to push push himself back. Like, hellman has got a pretty substantial army here with plus one attack upgrade. Yeah, just now finishing. And it looks like he's going to back off to just take his natural expansion. DTs are being oh uh, warped in Ermigard. at that pylon. And, uh... Oh, walking right past. Does he see it? He must see he it. Has he has to, see, to it. see it. Yeah. Oh, taking wax at the Colossus. Probably not the best use. Honestly, he needs to get back. He was in front of that army. He needs to get back and get on top of that ramp because he is going to get up on top and he's going to force field the poop out of that ramp. Yeah, this is... Oh, but oh, one does get in. in. Oh, oh no. what are you doing? Get, get in there. there. Get up there, little guy. This, uh, the Observer is now out, so these DTs are not going to be super uh, effective any longer, but they are going to take some swipes at this incoming Nexus. Uh, getting cleaned up fairly quickly, though, not even busting through those shields. Well, but honestly, what it did is, I mean, Kalman it was posturing like he wanted to move across the map. He wanted to put some pressure on, but it pulled him all the way back as soon as he saw those. So it really gave Zalen quite a bit more time here to get some more infrastructure up, to get more things going. Right now, he still just has Stalkers and Zealots, and that's it. Yeah, but he doesn't really have a Ooh, whole Stargate. lot like this. going for him. I mean, he's got 39 probes, so that's not a whole lot more than his opponent. He doesn't have anything but Stalkers and Zealots at the moment, and he doesn't have any Forges, so he, there's no upgrades. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh... Zaylin is definitely ahead now. It just depends on how long he can stay ahead mm -hmm. while Cowman has the better army. Uh, there is Stargate going down, but it is not going to get done before this uh, before this push comes across. Blink is going down, but it is not going to get done before this push comes. And two Colossus against this army of Zaylin, especially with some sentries from Cowman, this could be pretty scary. Dark Templar are coming in, but oh. the Observer is with the army. God, honestly, you know what Zalen needs to do? He needs to make one of these, uh, two of these Dark Templar into an Archon. That would completely nullify the force fields of Kalman. Mm -hmm. But he's going to just run one headlong into oh, that army. On, it's going to move need that. You need the Archon, man! But he is moving two Dark Templar. It looks like a... Well, they're going in an interesting trajectory there. They're going... Uh, hmm. They're looking for third bases, it appears. Yeah, honestly, I think I, I, I think this is a little unwise. I think he would be well served to have a, a unit that can crush down those force fields because that's what's going to give Cowman a victory if he pushes in here. But he's not. He's pulling back. Yeah, he just got that hallucinated uh, Phoenix run checking out what the infrastructure is and is seeing uh, all these gateways coming down. Oh, sees yeah. the Stargate not doing a darn thing. Sees Blink being made. And uh, so he's got a lot of information here. Oh, this is a r nice little window here from Zaylin. He does have the Dark Templar going in. Cannon is about five, six seconds from finishing up. Going to get a few kills here. Photon Overcharge does go down, and oh, it will wait. take out that DT. Oh, but there's another one, and that one got taken out because there's a cannon already there. So not a ton of things happening and there. Zaylin is... Uh, Zaylin is Definitely getting, uh, keeping himself ahead here, but these, this, man, these Colossus numbers are still increasing. And he's starting to produce Void Rays out of that Stargate. Blink Stalker's a good choice, and he's got a lot of gateways, but he's still on two bases. Uh, and the main base is beginning to get mined out. He's chrono boosting the crap out of that Void Ray. Um, Zaylin's at the point where he needs to get a third base now. And there's a pylon here on uh, the right side. And honestly, I think this, uh, this, third base on the right side wouldn't be too terribly hard for him to hold if he put some cannons here on the left side of his base just to stop the eventual um, war prism from coming in. Mm -hmm. So Cowman kind of maintaining map control here does have the forward tower, has a few forward pylons and uh, just kind of lazily getting a third expansion, building up his army, and kind of pulling ahead of his opponent. Oh, the Forge just now finishing up for Zaylin. Uh Still no upgrades in production. Charge is now being 
uh, produced. Yeah, upgrades are going to get out of hand here for Cowman too if uh, Zalen doesn't get a handle on it because plus two is going down right now as well as charge as well as a Templar archive. So there's going to be Colossus as well as Archons on the field and I mean it's possible that he's going for that Templar archives just in case to get Storm to deal with a bunch of Void Rays but Zalen's not really investing in that many Void Rays um, but Storm is uh, Storm is sick against a piled up group of Void Rays. Mm-hmm. So it looks like Zaylin's third expansion has been found by Cowman. He knows what's going on. There is a hallucinated phoenix moving in, but not really seeing it. It didn't go deep enough into the main to see anything very useful there. Uh, so, And then eventually getting uh, taken out by the main army. And uh, so Cow or Zaylin, rather, is taking these zealots, doing some aggression on this pylon, and uh, trying to shut this down, but he hasn't... Oh, yeah, he took out the one that was over by the, that other choice for a natural as well, so really trying to shut down Cowman's map control here. Oh, man, Galligation, how many times have we seen this today? A large number of Colossus versus a Stalker Zealot Archon army. Yeah, this time there's no Immortals, though. That's what we normally see. That's Void Rays instead, and the Void Rays may be able to do some damage here, uh, but... It looks like Cowman is just, you know, starting to pull ahead here. Yeah, he's pulling ahead in the probe count, and uh, the upgrades are clearly in his favor. So Zalen is going to have to do some fancy footwork in order to get back ahead here. There is a fleet beacon down from Zalen here, too, so he's doing the right thing. He knows the composition. He knows that he needs to get those tempests up, but he does still have one Stargate. Okay, good. Yes, thank you, Zalen, hero <laughs> Protoss of the day. Learning from all the other PvPs. Uh, yes, thank you. We see Colossus. So he puts down a fleet beacon. And uh, <clears throat> every other PvP we've seen today... Sorry, as I just choked on something, so I'm recovering here. Um, we've seen uh, this Colossus composition here. but And we, in one game we saw an attempt to get the Tempest, but it was only off of one Stargate, and it was a lot too late. But now two Stargates for Zaylin. He's got one Tempest on the way, second Stargate coming down. He's going to probably eventually want to start getting those air upgrades as well. But, I mean, Cowman is all the way back at his base, and he's got six Colossus, so... Yeah, this might be too late as well as he is marching across the map. He saw the entire army composition of Zaylin. He knows that he's going to be having the upper hand, especially uh, with having the upgrade <clears throat> advantage as well. So he is just charging across the map. Yeah, this is going to be really... Oh, Cowman, yes, you need to keep going right now. Now is your time to strike my friend uh, but he sees the uh, the pylons going down here oh, but, oh man those colossus are so gross yeah I mean six colossus is a lot Tempest getting out of position a little bit they're getting a little forward trying to take some shots not doing a whole lot at the moment and the colossus are raining fire and death from the air and this is just melting the ground forces void rays doing what they can but really just focusing on yeah. archons it looks like and the colossus are being unscathed and chewing through this army yeah those colossus are absolute death right now as common just marching right on through and he's just wow good good game yep. good game and that is going to be the match. Uh, yeah. So No Dice Gaming is going to be the victor in our third place match today. That means that they are going to get 100 US dollars mm -hmm. to split as they desire between their teams. So big round of applause. Congratulations for No Dice Gaming. Um, it was a pleasure seeing and casting Integrity Gaming. You were a great team. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, we'll be going home today empty-handed, but somebody had to. It, they did indeed, and we are sorry to see you go as, you know, just great games games all around and so that takes out both the uh the people that we had uh predicted to win the whole thing outright no dice gaming was a a favorite very early on integrity gaming becoming a favorite as time went on not just with us but within kind of the league in general and uh so very very cool uh, to see them play, but unexpected to see them go out so soon. So we will be having Miraculous Gaming and Micro Gamers it's gonna as be the, the hardest finale. Matched cast ever. Good with luck. The names, yes, yes, indeed. I will be sitting out on those. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yes. I don't have to deal with that. <laughs> okay, uh, so we are going to be taking at least a 15-minute break here to get things organized for the Grand Finals. This is going to be the Grand Finals we're going yes. to do. We've gone through three matches so far. Let's recap. Yes. Uh, first match of the day, as I pull out my handy-dandy piece of paper, was Integrity Gaming versus Miraculous Gaming, in which Miraculous Gaming took four games in a row off of Integrity Gaming, moving themselves right on into the Grand Final. They get to go... Uh, out to the park, take a break, uh, do whatever they want to do for a few hours while the rest
rest of the teams and battle it out. Yep. Second match of the day, second best of seven, was Micro Gamers versus No Dice Gaming. Uh, no Dice came out and won one match, and then Micro Gamers came out and won four in a row. So that finished up four to one. That was the second best of seven. That put No Dice immediately into the next round, in which they just finished up playing against Integrity Gaming, uh, winning. Wow, what was the score now? <laughs> Winning three to two. Yeah, it's four to two. Sorry. Four to two. Yep. Um, but you know, and it makes me wonder too if uh, No Dice just played. Uh, were, were they fresh? Does that make a difference? But I mean, hard to tell. What can you say? But so that is going to leave Micro Gamers and Miraculous Gaming coming up in our grand final here shortly, and uh, we are going to be joined by none other than in Jeff in Control Robinson. And I'm just looking over here to get an update on uh, what we're doing and. Uh, Yep, we're just going to be waiting to get in control on, getting the teams ready. So we're going to be getting set up for our grand final. It is going to be awesome. We thank you for joining us.